Hello, most students um, use the regression line formula, this one here, or use uh, their calculators and sixth form, and don't know what the proof is. Um, so that's what this video is about. And this is the, le the formula for the least squares regression. So I'm going to go through and explain what's going on here when they meet, say, least, least squares, and then I'm going to provide a complete proof and we'll work through it. Okay, so the least squares method sets out to minimize um, the residuals, some of the square of the residuals. So let's have a look. Here, what are the residuals? Well, these distances here, aren't they? I've got my regression line here in green. Yeah, I've got my actual points here. And these distances are called the residuals. Yeah, some of them are positive, some are negative. And what we want to do is, rather than sort of balancing off the positive and negative, we're going to square all of them and sum them up. And then we're going to minimise it. So let's have a look at the formula first for what's the formula for a residual. Well, the residual is going to be the actual y. So that's that height there. Take away the predicted y. Actual y and predicted y. Okay. So what's our prediction? Well, let's just start off with our um, standard regression uh, formula. Sometimes it's written as y equals a plus bx, isn't it? But I'm writing it this way around for today, and we'll use it like that. Okay, so for any point, I, um, the first point, second point, third point, so the little i is the number of the point. So the residual for the first point will be the y actual for the first point, subtract the predicted for the first point, i.e. b, the x of the first point, plus a, yep. Yeah? So that's going to be my residual. So if I want to know what the square of it is, well, I just square that equation there, don't I? And then I want to sum all these residuals up. Yeah, so there's my sigma symbol, and I'm squaring it across, I'm, I'm summing it across all the i's. In fact, I haven't bothered to put that in, but that's what we're doing. So therefore, I have this um sum on the right uh, right hand side and we call this the total error and i called it a big e yeah so there's my formula um for the sum of the squares of the residuals okay so what do i want to do i want to minimize this and i want to minimize this in respect of picking the B value and the A value. And we know how to minimise um, functions in relation to um, a variable. We use differentiation. So in this case, we need the differential to be zero because we're at a turning point, aren't we? The better whether it's positive or negative at this point, but it would be a turning point. So we need the differential of E with respect to a to be zero, but we also need uh, the differential of e in respect to b to be zero. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through and we're going to do that differentiation. We're going to set them to zero and we're going to try and solve. So let's do that because it's a bit unusual. You've probably not seen anything like this before. So let's start by minimizing a. So here's my um, expression. Here's my equation formula for e. Yeah. So I'm going to differentiate this beast here on the um, right hand side and using the chain rule well what can I do well I've got a bracket here so I and it's squared isn't it so I'm going to get um, after that when I differentiate it I'm going to get my bracket minus one from the power so that's going to be to the power one I'm going to multiply through by the two from the bracket so that was differentiating the outside. Now I'm differentiating the inside with respect to A. Well, I've got a negative A term here. So when I differentiate that DA, I just get a minus 1. So there we are. And I've just dealt with it like that. And I've left the sum, the sigma, out the front. Ignore that for now. That's all I wanted to do, yeah? And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to set that to 0. Aren't I? I'm going to make that equal to 0 for my turning point for a max or min. Okay. Now... 
here I've got a multiplier of negative 2. Well, that's of no relevance, is it, to um, when something is equal to 0. So I only really need to know when the sum of this bracket equals 0. So there we go. So I'm going to write it like that. Now I can break this bracket up into its three terms, can't I? So the first term is the sum of yi. The second one is a subtraction of the sum of b times xi. And the third term is just the sum of all the a's. Now, as a's and b's are constant across all these sums, we can start playing around with this. Now, here I've only got a sum of y, so that stays as it is. That's just the sum of all the y's, yeah? Now, what happens here in the second one, though, is this b is just a constant. So every x i is multiplied by b. So I could just put the b out the front, and I've got the sum of the x's now. And you might start looking at this going, oh, look, I'm starting to see some means going on here. Yeah, you are, to an extent. We could be heading towards means. And the final one is, well, really, I've just got um, each one of these is just the same A, isn't it? I'm just summing all the A's here. If I took that one all the way through, I'm just going to get N. If I've got N points, I'm going to get A, N, aren't I there? So here's my equation. I've got the sum of all the Y's, subtract B times the sum of all the X's, subtract A, um, N lots of A, must equal zero. So that's going to be my first equation. OK, so we've got one of two equations, and we're going to end up in simultaneous equations. OK, let's do the same thing here now for the Bs. So here's my equation, um, formula for E. I'm going to differentiate it dB this time. So what happens? Well, the bracket, which was power 2, is the same, and it comes down to the 1 using the chain rule. Um, and I get my 2 on the outs of coming through from the power at the top, don't I? Now, the next thing I've got to do is I've got to differentiate the inside db. Well, that's not a power function of b. That's not a function of b. This is the only bit that's a function of b. When I differentiate that db, I get the multiple a negative xi, don't I? That's like a constant multiplier of b. So I put that out the front of the bracket, just like I would in chain rule. It looks a bit odd, but it's still doing the same thing. Good. Um, and then I set that, that whole sum to zero again. Um, once again, I don't need to bother with the negative 2 because that's just a multiplier. Um, it's important that the rest of this sum equals 0, isn't it? So I rewrite it like that. So the sum of xi times yi minus bxia, the bracket, must equal 0 when I sum them all up. Now I can expand this bracket. It's going to get slightly more tricker, trickier. Oops. And let's have a look. The first term here, um, splitting the terms, well, that's just the sum of the xi, yi's, isn't it? Um, because I've got that times that. OK, what happens to this middle term? Well, this time I've got an xi times another xi. So I've got the sum of b xi squared, there it is. And finally, I've got xi times a. So I get in the final one, I get the sums of the a xi's. Now, once again, a's are constants in this. Excuse me, I'm just going to get it up here. Yeah, A's are A's and B's are constant, so um, across all of these sums, aren't they? First one's got no A's and B's, so it just stands as it is, sum of XI, sum of YI. The second one, well, the B's are constant here, all the XI squareds are multiplied by it, so I can take that outside, and then I get my sum of all the XI squareds. So some of you will be thinking that looks a bit like standard deviation. And again, for the final term, A is constant, all the xi's are multiplied by that, so I can take that outside, and I've got the sum of the xi's, which you might start thinking of, oh, look, that looks like a mean of x, doesn't it? But I end up with this second equation here, okay? And that's our second equation, or our simultaneous. So what have I got to do next? Oh, we've got to solve for it. So here's my two differential equations, sorry, simultaneous equations. They're functions of A and B. There's B, there's A, there's B, there's A. Um, and they're linear, aren't they? So I, we know how to solve simultaneous equations with um, linears. The only thing we need to think about you might be a bit uh, worried about is all these sigmas here. Well, these are just values, aren't they? These are just, I can actually find the values for my, my set of data. And I could just put them in there, and then you would know, you'd probably feel a lot more comfortable about solving these simultaneously. 
Um, so they're just sums, aren't they? What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those values in and I'm going to use elimination to solve this. And I'm going to eliminate A and I'm going to find B. So what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to multiply the top equation by something and the bottom equation by something so the A's cancel out. So what do I have to do? Excuse me. Let's move it up so we can see it nicely. My screen's playing a bit today. Here we go. So I need to multiply the top equation by x and the sum of xi's. So we had start off with the sum of yi's and then I multiply it by the xi. And the next one we had sum, sum of the xi's, multiplying it by the xi's again. And some of the xi's there. And for the second equation, I'm just going to multiply it by n. So here's my n coming through. And now we can see that I've got the same thing here. So when I do a subtraction, those two cancel out. So what do I get left with? Well, I get this term, subtract that term. And then I've got this term, subtract that term. But it's a negative. Negative, so it becomes a positive. OK. And these two terms have b's in them. And these don't have b's in, so they're just like a number. So let's split it up. So this is going to one side. And this lot's coming to this, the other side. So I've got all the B's on the right-hand side. So my signs have changed, haven't they, as I moved them over. Um, I'm going to change those signs and change the order a bit, because it might look a bit more sensible if I move that to there and that to there, and this to here and that to there, and I change the sign of the whole equation. Um, there we go. So everything's looking nice here. Um, what else do I need to do? Well, actually, it would be quite useful. You can see I've got an n going through here. And I'm going to divide this equation by n. So the first term is just the sum of the x, i, y, i. So the next one is the two, two sums divided by n. Um, this term is just going to become the sum of the squares of the x's. And that one there is going to be the sum of the x, um, i squared over n. Now, um, I'm going to just do one more thing before I move on. He, these terms are both in a B, aren't they? So I can factorise it, bring the B out front, and just put those two terms together into a bracket. Now, you might have recognised what we're looking at here, and this is really important for what we're up to. Excuse me, I just want to bring that up to there. This is basically the nub of what we've got. Now, you might have noticed that this term here is actually the s x y yeah there's our sum of the x y's and there's my x bar y bar it's sort of there isn't it and you might have noticed on this side we've got the sum of the s x x haven't we this bit here yeah sum of the x squared and then i'm subtracting the x bar squared times n isn't it so this equation is effectively become SXY must equal B times SXX, which of course we can rearrange because we want to know what B is. Well, B is going to be SXY over SXX, which you'll have seen in the formula book. So we've done the first part of our proof, haven't we? We've proved what our gradient is for our regression line. Now let's have a look at what our constant is. And we're going to use the other equation that we um, derived earlier, the first one. So I've got this equation here, sum of the y's, subtract b times the sum of the x's, subtract n lots of a, a will give me zero. I'm going to divide that equation through by n, because you might start to see something going on here about these terms. I've got that one now, and I've got that one there. You might have already noticed, thought, oh, that's the sum of the y, so that's the mean y, and that's the mean x. So let's just rearrange it to get a to be the subject. So that's going to come on to the other side, isn't it? So what have I got? I've got a equals sum of the y's over n, subtract b, the sum of the x's over n, which you probably already worked out that a must equal y bar, subtract b lots of x bar. That's quite nice and neat, isn't it? So we now know what our constant is. Now, I'm going to put that back into our regression line. So that was our original line, wasn't it? Y equals BX plus A. So if I substitute what we just found in here, that A up here, expression here, into the A here, I get this equation. Y equals BX plus Y bar minus BX. And of course, if I just do a very quick rearrange and move that Y over to this side, it becomes negative. And if I put these, this lot into a bracket in B, lo and behold, what do I get? I get Y minus Y bar must equal 
B lots of X minus X bar. Tick. That's the second part of our equation, isn't it? As we build it all up. And we already know what B is. We've already found that B is that. And you might have also noticed at this point that this line must go through X bar, Y bar, mustn't it? Because both the brackets are zero. This, if I put a bracket this side, zero, and that bracket zero when we're at that point there. Good. So there we have it. If we find our total error by this, using this formula, differentiate it to minimise it, minimise E for both variables, A and B, we get this equation for, um, for the regression line where B is X, S, X, Y over S, X, X. And remember that that point, that line, always goes through the mean point. There you have it. Best of luck.